In this video, we'll learn about public IPs, private IPs, and network address translation. So I want to start out by comparing private and public IP addresses to something you're probably already familiar with. Let's say that we are part of a business or an organization, and this organization has their own little phone system. And within that phone system, let's say that everybody has a four digit extension. Well, those little four digit extensions, they work just fine inside the building. They work just fine if I'm dialing from one of those phones in that building to another phone. But if I instead decide to use my cell phone and I wanna call those numbers from my cell phone, that's not going to work because those numbers are private. They're extensions that only make sense inside that little isolated phone system. They're not globally unique, like a real phone number, which is globally unique. That's sort of like a public and private IP address. So let's extend the same concept to computers. So here we can see I have some address ranges, 10.0.0.0 through 10.255.255.255. 1 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255 and 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.255.255. These are defined as private address ranges. These address ranges are unusable on the internet. They are for private only. And so, yeah, there's certain address ranges that are reserved for private addresses and if an address falls outside these ranges it's probably a public IP address on the internet so these addresses make sense inside of my little private network here but once I start to leave my little private network and for example I need to reach some destination on the internet well these addresses don't make sense on the internet there may be millions of devices that all have these addresses in all their little private networks all over the world. So yeah, these little addresses don't make sense on the internet. They're private IP addresses. And one of the reasons we use private IP addresses is because there's only so many addresses to go around. And there's way more devices out there now than there are usable IP version 4 addresses. There's no way that we could give a public IP address to every single smartphone, every single computer, every smart thermostat, every smart whatever in the world. We have to use private network addresses for those. But most of those devices do need access to the internet. And so if their source address doesn't make any sense on the internet, how do we handle giving these devices internet access. So we'll take a look at how these devices get internet access in just a moment, but I just want to show you one other thing first. Notice when I do an IP config on my computer, look at my IP address, 192.168.0.13. That falls within this private network address range but I still have internet access. I can still get to the internet. And the thing that typically makes that possible is a router with network address translation. So let's add a router here to our diagram. And I'm going to give this router a public IP address. I'm just gonna make it 1.2.3.4 to keep it really simple. But basically, Let's assume that this router can perform NAT. It can perform network address translation. And here I'll add a computer to my diagram. Let's say that this guy is 192.168.1.25. So that's the address of one of my computers. And this computer needs access to the internet. Well, the way that this is going to work is it is going to generate a packet outbound headed towards the internet and the router will capture that and it'll perform what we call a source network address translation basically it'll say okay 
This is coming from source IP 192.168.1.25. Let me remove that source IP and substitute in for it 1.2.3.4. And now as this traffic flows out to the internet, the internet will see the source address is 1.2.3.4. That's an address that the internet can understand. And so when whatever website I'm trying to reach responds back, the response is going to be set to 1.2.3.4, at which point the router will receive that return traffic. It'll pull out that 1.2.3.4 address and it'll send the response traffic to the original requesting computer. And so that's how NAT works, network address translation. And it basically is there to take a private IP address and translate it to a public IP address. That way all of the computers on every network don't need to have one of these valuable public IPs. Let's take a moment to do a quick review of some of the key concepts that we just learned. We learned that a private IP address is not routable on the internet, that it only makes sense inside of the local network that it exists within. And we learned that there are certain ranges of IP addresses that are reserved for use only as private IP addresses. We also learned that if we want traffic to actually be routable on the internet, a public IP address is required. And so therefore, traffic that originates from a system that has a private IP is not necessarily routable on the internet. We have to use something called network address translation or NAT to take out that private IP address and replace it with an internet routable public IP.